everybody to week six here in Southwest Georgia High School football here on the Toyota School Board Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Here on the dealership floor, Bobby Labor along with Jesse Small today. The other guys get tired from golf yesterday? Uh, yeah, Myron's back. Myron's so back. I'm not sure what Chris is up to. No, Chris probably had to work today. Probably had to do a real job instead of coming in here, didn't he? <laughs> no question about that. Jesse, a pretty exciting week of week six football. Yes, I thought it was, especially the Mitchell and Miller game. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Our game of the week, Mitchell County and Miller County up there in Camilla last Friday night was a great game. One point difference separated the two. We'll talk about that here in a little bit, but a lot of controversy also in opening of region week play, wasn't it? Yes, it was, especially with Lowndes and uh, Colquitt County. Still hearing repercussions about that, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're going to see what happens with that in the later weeks to come, but those, we'll talk about that as well. A lot of other scores. Anything to surprise you in week six right now? No, but I knew my Baker and Charter would uh, <gasps> do that thing. You know, you, and I, and I was going to get to that because you're the only one who showed up today. Why was that? <laughs> That's right. They, they didn't know. Bacon came through. They know. They That's know. Right. They did good. Baconton all over Stewart County this week, and we'll get to that as well. But let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll start talking about all these games here in southwest Georgia from last Friday night here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Take a look at these Camrys in stock here at Thomasville Toyota. That's not even half of them. We are loaded with huge inventory and big savings all month long. Check it out. $9 down, $9 a month for nine months on every brand new Thomasville Toyota in stock. All of them, cars, trucks, SUVs, minivans, $9 down, $9 a month for nine months. Come on out right now to Thomasville Toyota, where you drive home happy. At Farm Credit, our roots run deep in this rich Georgia soil. We are the nation's leading provider of credit to farmers and farm businesses. And we know what it takes to grow your business. We've closed more loans on the hood of a pickup truck than some bankers will in a lifetime. We're proud of our history. Prouder still to finance the dreams of farmers, landowners, and agribusinesses. We're Farm Credit. We're here to help you grow. For all of your heating and cooling needs, call Ronnie and Jeremy Mills at 443 U.S. Highway 84 East in Cairo, Georgia. 377-2716. Refrigeration, duct cleaning, residential, commercial, or industrial. When you're in need of service and repair and don't know what to do, it's time. American Standard Heating and Cooling Systems. A higher standard of comfort. Mills Heating and Air. Serving Cairo and the surrounding areas for over 30 years. And be sure to ask them about the flat cornbread. Training and keeping it safe. Come to Fitness Lab for your workout. It's convenient and it's open twenty-four hours a day. Follow your dreams, find your passion here at Fitness Life. Check out Sunbelt Trophy on East Jackson Street for all your award ideas. We carry trophies for all sports. Plaques, metals, resins, and beautiful crystals and acrylics. With on-site engraving, check out our showroom for your one-stop shopping celebration needs. Also, check out our new custom school award only at Sunbelt Trophy, 912 East Jackson Street, Thomasville, 229-228-1187. back everybody to the Toyota School Board Show sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Jesse, we talked about it at the opening. Big controversy up there in Moultrie last Friday night. Yes, I heard about that. Uh, and I honestly hope it's not true that the line coach would have to stoop to that level in mm -hmm. order to win a game. Uh, that's a good point. You know, I mean, did he have to do that to get to beat Colquitt County? And if he did, that's that's pretty, I don't want to say low, but that's, that's not very professional. That's very low. And uh, they were talking about here, uh, Lyle's office was held to 156 yards. I don't see a defense around, no matter how good they are, containing 
Cokie County's offense to 156 yards without something extra going on. So it might be a possibility. Well, if, for those of you who have not heard, if you are, you're probably under a rock, but here in southwest Georgia last Friday night, Lowndes defeated Colquitt County 17-14 to under some very peculiar ways. But, uh, you know, Lowndes is a very good football team. They've scored so many points. The Colquitt County defense showed up. Uh, but against this Colquitt County Packer offense, this high-powered offense, which has been averaging close to well over 350 yards a game, were held to, like you said, 156 yards. Exactly. Negative eight in rushing, rushing. because of the, the 35 yards in sacks that Lowndes had on Colquitt County. Four sacks against Cole Seagraves and Daniel Mobley, which attributed to the pressure throwing three interceptions and losing a fumble between the two quarterbacks. So a lot of, in, you know, and, and then after the game, for the again, we'll get to the point here where the controversy starts. At the end of the game, Coach Rush Probst, on his radio interview with his local uh, radio program, um, accused Central coaches of being on the sideline during the game and having one up in the coach's box with binoculars reading Colquitt County signs from a former Colquitt County coach that was fired two years ago. So, I mean, as a coach, you see all this. I mean, and I know he said during the, in the interview, he said he was trying to get his administration to, you know, fig, you know stop it, but he couldn't do anything because he's coaching a football game. But I'm going to tell you one thing and go, now I call timeout if I see that happening. And I get with the referees and I get with everybody and just cancel that out. Exactly. I had heard it was two former coaches of Colquitt County, but I didn't know it was central coaches. Oh, it was it were central coaches. That's who he called out. Coach, he called out in names, too. And, you know, for those of you, he coached out Coach, Coach Shavers, and he called out a former pack, uh, coach over there, uh, Payne, Buzz Payne, who used to coach at Colquitt County under Rush Probst two years ago, was let go, and then he came back to Central here this last year to be under Coach Shavers again where he was before. Um... He, they, he was accused of being in the Lowndes box with binoculars stealing a Colquitt County signs for Lowndes. So I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I hope it's not true. I hope they didn't have to stick stoop to that right, level. Right, right. But if it did happen, they get there's an end because what goes around comes around, and you shouldn't have to do that. Play a fair game, win, lose. No question. I like it. I like it. But in, let's talk about the game, the game itself. Lounge still very strong on defense. They did hold this team down. Whether they got the signs or not, they had to execute to do that. I mean, they were, they were all over Colquitt County this game. That's true. You have to execute. But if, if it's true and you know the plays and you tell the coach, okay, they're going to run this at this time, I know where to put my players at to stop that play, and I know where to put it at the next time because you done told me what's coming. Right. So that helps out quite a bit if it was true. I mean... <laughs> To, to hold Mobley and Seagraves down for five of seven in passing, 40, only 45 yards. And that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's amazing <laughs> that something like that could happen. You know, Coco County got a great punt return for a touchdown in this game. That was one of their touchdowns that they had, plus they scored an offensive touchdown, but could not muster anything else at the end of the game. They had the opportunity at the end of the game driving – inside Lowndes territory, but two sacks moved them out of field goal range enough for their uh, kicker to kick the field goal. So Lowndes holds on and prevails. They go 5-0 and oh on the season right now. Colquitt County drops to 3-2, and two, but uh, the more importantly, 1-0 and oh for Lowndes in the Region 1, 6A, 0-1 oh for Colquitt County in Region 1, 6A. So that's a big start in that region right there. Yes, it is. Jesse, let's talk about another game that was played over and talk about the Thomasville schools. Thomasville going up to Cook. They had a great game going up until halftime, 3-3 three to three at the half, and then the wheels came off again for Thomasville in the second half. I, I don't understand. Thomasville coaching has got to find a way to get that offense involved in the game. It's obvious with the score, the low scoring and everything, but you get the offense to score, give the defense some help. Thomasville will be amazing. Oh, I think so, too. I think they've got a great team. The defense was there. The defense had them. I mean, to hold Cook to three points in the first half. Have you ever, have you ever seen a game that Thomasville defense was not there? Not yet. Not in a single one of them. Not yet. The offense has to come true to keep them off the field, though, don't they? Exactly. Give them some play. You know, they had they had three to three at halftime, but then all the wheels came off with a bunch of mistakes and turnovers in the second half, allowed four Cook to come back, and only win 17 to three. You know, I thought it would be, you know, if they were going to get beat, I thought it would be much blow, more of a blowout game. I mean, we've seen Thomasville. I mean, they've got a good team. 
they just got to execute on offense, don't they? Yes, they do. I, I did not see Thomas Field getting blown out. I, don't, I do not see Thomas Field getting blown out at all with the defense that they have. Uh -huh. Even if we go back to the Central game with the 40 some mile points they scored, it was not actually the defense that gave up all those points. They were put in a situation. So Well, the I offense respect, couldn't move the ball. Exactly. And I respect Thomas Field's defense it, tremendously. And they were three and out the whole game. Exactly. The whole game. So, I mean, not much is going to stop that Central offense this year, though, are not they? Not too much. <laughs> I know you've been talking about that. <laughs> you and uh, Myron have been talking about that big time. You know, starting off in region, you know, with Cook County, I thought it was a big, big, big deal for Thomasville to get a good uh, leg up on the region right. if they could win over there in Cook. Unfortunately, they 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 fall 17 to three in that deal. So the Bulldogs are one and four this season, but they don't they don't play like they've been one and four. No, they don't. Not at all. It's amazing. I, I chose Thomasville to win. I thought they would win. I time. thought so, too. I thought they would go over there and win, too. But Like I said, the offense got to step up more. They got to give the defense a chance. No more three and outs. They cannot prevail that. They've got to keep sustaining drives to give the defense a rest because half the defense is on offense. Yeah, exactly. You can't turn the ball over and turn them over three and out inside the ter Cook territory either. You got to have good, you know, if you do, you got to have good punts and put good field position because it's hurting that defense for Thomasville every time they play. Coach has got to find that offense that they had against Stewart County. They got to find it again, bring it to the forefront, and they got to play. You know, coming 58 points, they scored 58 points. It's not like they can't, and I don't care who Stewart County is. Stewart County is a good football team. I mean, exactly. they're not good, good, but they're, they're competition. And, you know, sometimes they say, well, maybe play easier to play, you know, your second string than Stewart County, which Roger says all the time, but, you know, that's Roger. But uh, I, Thomasville has, has, a, has a chance here. Yeah, exactly. You know, they got a big opponent coming in this Friday. And I was hoping they could get by Cook to set this game up, Brooks County, coming in Friday. Brooks been playing well. Very well. So we'll, we'll be, that'd be an interesting one. We'll yeah. talk about that, too. Let's finish out the Thomasville schools, then I'm going to slump. I thought Brookwood had it. I thought they had a streak going, but uh, Brookwood loses to Flint River Academy 35-20 to 20 over there in, in Brookwood this last Friday night. Jesse, I just I, I don't understand sometimes, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, say some things and, you know, it, it, we were losing 20, 20 to 6 at halftime, okay? There's opportunities for this offense to rev some things up and make some changes to where you can get some things done, try some new things at that time. We don't. We don't. We don't, we don't go after any kind of in ingenuity or anything like that to make something happen. And it's just we're not a team that can play from behind. Brookwood is not a team that can play from behind. They've got to sustain it. They've got to be able to be ahead or be close because they sustain drives. I'll give Brookwood credit. They sustain drives. It's like the Ed Pilger football okay. with the wing tee. Most yeah. boringest football in the world. All of a sudden, boom, he'll break one. Right, exactly. You know, keep you on your heels. If you're on your heels at one play, you're, you're too, it's too late because they're by you. And that's what happened in the second half. But the offense just could not move the ball against Flint River, and I thought they had a better chance of doing that Friday night. Well, you know, also uh, Flint River had a punishing run game, and when you've got a young defense that doesn't have that much depth, it wears them down and it takes its toll. So it, it finally bends or either breaks. But you can find something good out of anything, like uh, Patterson. Oh. 19 rushes for 146 yards. So, you know, the rushing game was there. Maybe some of the other elements didn't come in and mesh well with it at the time, but right. you got something to work with. He's one of the sophomores from Brookwood that's going to be a very big runner here in the future. If he's not already, two touchdowns for Taylor, big long runs, a 35-yard run and a 40-yard run there last Friday night. Plus some, you know, they've got, they've got some good, good highlights. I mean, they've got good potential there, but it's just – Sometimes I think you just need to get away from what you're doing if you're going to play catch up to make things happen. And maybe throwing the ball a little bit? Yeah. Open, throwing the ball? Open up the game. Just, Throw I, just tell the Brookwood Warriors, don't get down on yourself. You're young. you got a lot to learn. Learn from the mistakes that you've made. Correct them and get better at them. You know, Jesse, you made a good point. This defense is very young. So they're going to score a lot of points. you got to be able to keep up exactly. with those points on offense. You know, they, you know, Flint River piled up 523 total yards against this Brookwood defense. I mean, 500 yards. Yeah, but it's like, it's, it's truly a necessary roughness type of thing. Offense goes to defense, <laughs> defense goes to offense. So you're worn down. And if they can continue to put people in and grind on you and stuff, it's going to take its You time. went with that necessary roughness uh, deal, didn't you? I yeah, like that. Was, oh, that was good. <laughs> that was real good. <laughs> 
but you're right. I mean, it's just they've got to be able to keep up. Exactly. They've got that offense has to be able to keep up because they cannot play from behind. So, going to be interesting to see what happens with Brookwood coming up here this next Friday night in Westwood. They ho they go to Westwood to play Westwood and Camilla, the high flying attack of the Westwood Wildcats. We'll see what they did here after the break. But right now, let's take one here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show from Thomasville Toyota. This is so easy. Shopping from home, from your office, from your phone at thomasvilletoyota.com. Shop for brand new Toyotas or look at hundreds of pre-owned vehicles. Get approved in seconds with one click. And during business hours, live chat with one of our internet specialists. So shop easy at the happy place, thomasvilletoyota.com. Thomasville Toyota, where you have home happy. At Farm Credit, our roots run deep in this rich Georgia soil. We are the nation's leading provider of credit to farmers and farm businesses. And we know what it takes to grow your business. We've closed more loans on the hood of a pickup truck than some bankers will in a lifetime. We're proud of our history. Prouder still to finance the dreams of farmers, landowners, and agribusinesses. We're Farm Credit. We're here to help you grow. I'm Samantha Myers at Tim Smith & Associates. Please call me at Tim Smith & Associates, 229-243-0990 for all your group benefits and personal insurance needs. Samantha is a great specialist in plan design, health insurance, group insurance, personal insurance, anything dealing with your health insurance needs. Give us a call today at Tim Smith & Associates in Bainbridge, Georgia. Tim Smith & Associates, 253 Wiggum Dairy Road, Bainbridge, Georgia, 243-0990. Sunbelt Trophy on East Jackson Street is your one-stop shop for all your celebration needs. Now, just for high schools, check out our sister company, DiscountVarsityAwards.com, where you'll find amazing discounts on beautiful full-color awards custom designed for your school. Check us out at DiscountVarsityAwards.com or call 229-228-1187. Only at Sunbelt Trophy in Thomasville. Since 1953, Sharper Oil Company has been providing fuel to southwest Georgia and north Florida. Sharper Oil is your complete full-service dealer for fuel, oil by the gallon or in bulk, grease, tanks, from 150 to 30,000 gallons, filters and related parts needs. Sharper Oil Company, 250 Wiggum Dairy Road in Bainbridge. Call today, 246-2183. Sharper Oil Fueling Stations are open 24-7, providing you with your fuel and lubricant needs with your Sharper Fleet Card. Sharper Oil Company, fueling your way to success. My name is Dana Copeland. I am Director of Athletic Development here at Koji Athletic Company in Thomasville, Georgia. Next level training. everybody to the Toyota Scoreboard Show here at Thomasville Toyota on the dealership floor filming here on Tuesday mornings, every Tuesday morning in Thomasville. Jesse, it's a lot of fun doing it here, isn't it? Yes, it is, very much. We got a lot of people walking around looking at us and stuff like that, and we wave to them, and they don't have a clue what they're doing, what we're doing. <laughs> no, not at all. I had to take my jacket off. It got a little warm in here. We got to turn some AC on in here. But uh, Jesse, a great game up there in uh, Cairo, for Cairo this last week. A lot of questions were being asked about how the toughness of this uh, football team, Westover coming in on a high mark uh, with their win over against Monroe, one of the top teams in Albany. Cairo was being questioned, can you, can you outperform some of these good teams coming in in your region and sustain and hold off these uh, region uh, competitors? Because right now, everybody's, you got a target on your back right now. Because you've been you've been defeated a couple times in the early part of the year, but now you know these other teams coming in thinking they can beat you. Cairo doing a good job holding off Westover in in Cairo at West Thomas Stadium, 31 to seven. I think that was a very good statement to make here in the region. Yes, I've I've never questioned the toughness of our Cairo. It's just that I needed the offense to come to mm -hmm. the forefront more mm -hmm. and bring out. A, and right now, actually, the defense is keeping Cairo. And the winning guy. If Cairo can win the way they're winning now, with mediocre play from the uh, offense, if that offense ever steps up to the ability that it can, look out. Be something to watch. Because this game, if you looked at the stats, it was uh, 
Westover had seven more first downs than Cairo. Mm -hmm. They out, uh, they out rushed uh, total offense 302 to 216. Mm -hmm. Stats like that, Westover's leading and everything. You would think that, okay, from watching that, Westover was winning the game. Right. But no, their downfall was the 12 penalties for 111 yards. Big time. Four interceptions, which went for two touchdowns. Yep. And uh, it wasn't Davis this time. It was uh, Dismuke and uh, Wooten that uh, stepped up. I guess they watched that game and said, uh, y'all got to stop talking about Davis and we're here. Yeah, it was Davis and Thomas. You know, yeah. we want to get our names <laughs> announced on TV. But Dismuke and Reese Wooten, um, both had a great game coming in to score. The only two touchdowns scored in the second half were the interceptions run back for the touchdowns for Cairo. So Westover stopped Cairo's offense in the second half. Good thing the defense showed up. Yeah, but like Chris say, yeah, the best offense right now is the defense, and the <laughs> defense has been scoring. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recognize somebody. P.J. scored. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> P.J. scored on a five-yard run over there. Reese Wooten had a 13-yard pass from Donald Thomas also. Um, Donald... Deontay, Deontay Dismuke, Dismuke scored on the interception as well, along with Reese Wooten in the second half. So Cairo defense, that's that, the defense is carrying the team right now. Exactly, and it's a good thing, but it's you're going to get thing. in those defensive bat battles though yes. with a couple teams, if not in the region, um, in the playoffs by for sure. That offense has got, got to, step to step up. up. They have got to step up. I mean. Donald's doing a good job, but it's, there's nobody else beside Donald and PJ doing anything right now. Exactly. You gotta have a, you gotta have an extra threat, a threat. You gotta bring somebody else into the mix that can open up that offense and they can score some points. Is it too late in the season to find somebody, or pretty much can do it any week, can't no, you? No, you can find them. I don't think it's never too late. There's yeah. someone that that'll step up sooner or later. That you stepped I up soon. <laughs> <laughs> you got some eligibility left. Hop on there, baby. Yeah, for one or two plays, I'll be through. <laughs> <laughs> but 31-7 Cairo over Westover this last Friday night up there in Cairo. Guys, let's talk, or Jesse, let's talk. Here we go. Where's your letter? You don't have a letter today? Well, Chris is Chris not, isn't here. not here. So. so the crow, they eating the crow. We don't have any crow, no, bacon crow. Bacon tin. Bacon tin. 40. Jesse, 40. That, they heard your pep talk, son. They heard you, right. buddy. Bacon what do you think about that? Point. Oh, I, I love it. I told them all I got to do is just believe in themselves and keep the grind. They're going to whip somebody. And they are, uh, I think they got one or two more in there that they can. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. This is their second good. win of the season this year. Baconton outscoring Stewart County. Let me get to that page. There we go. Getting all over Stewart County this week, 40 to 13. 40. What's up with Baconton? They have, they, did you ship them some food, some bacon uh, surprise or something uh, like that? It's another bacon and beat down. It's another bacon and beat down? Right. It was Bob's shirt that you saw the other night in the live show on Thursday night, wasn't it? Yes. The bacon, what, that's strips? That's right. He had the bacon strips, <laughs> that's right. It was a sign. Well, two TDs from Brock Penson, a score from Zach Jones, and Quentin Smith allowed Baconton just to run all over everybody. Bakari McDuffie, as well as Matthew Dean, congratulations on scoring against Stewart County last Friday night. Guys, you guys have won two this year. That's, I mean, that's a lot to be, you gotta be, you gotta be proud of that. Yeah, they opened it up. They got passing scores, they got running scores. When you get it all missed and working together, it's a good thing. North Cobb Christian coming this weekend from Atlanta. From Atlanta? That'd be a long... Is this, is, is this number three, Jesse? Yeah, that's a long ways to come for a Baconton beatdown. It's homecoming for Baconton. Oh, yeah. Are they going to retire your number? Are you, a number up there for you? I, don't know, I might have to go up to the homecoming <laughs> and watch Baconton win that one. Homecoming this week for Baconton. Uh, the game starts at 5 p.m. Oh, man. You're going to have to get off work early, Chief. No, I'm already off. Oh, you're already off on Friday? You may have to go up there for that one and come back and see this other one that we got to talk about here in a minute. But Baconton all over Stewart County. Some other scores as well. Purple Hurricanes from Fitzgerald got into Pelham. I thought it would be a little closer than what it was, but they kind of took over and, you know, they beat them 40 to 11. <laughs> now, you know, I'm not a. I'm I respect everything that goes on at Pelham, but I'm not a fan of Pelham. I don't think they have showed anything. Like I say, I always go back. They want to be Bakerton, and if they would find Bakerton at this point of the year right here, it might have been a different story. Yeah. Oh, really? You yes. think Bakerton, they need a little bit more practice under their belt to play that's, Pelham? That's right. I mean, I'd like to see that game again right now. So would I. 
That'd be good. That'd be good. Pelham only mustering 169 yards. Now, you guys saw the game. Now, you weren't there no. for Seminole County, but Pelham, you know, played Seminole County very tough, you know, in, in, that, in that game two weeks, for, two weeks ago for our game of the week. Last week, it's like they came back. They didn't show up. They was, uh, Roger and uh, Myron was only talking about, they only mentioned one threat for uh, Pelham. Mm -hmm. And a one-threat team is easy to defend against. It, it, it's the Fitzgerald, one of the ranked teams coming in to double A and Pella moving up to 2A. This was their first game in 2A. Not a very good start. A welcome to the Region 1 2A bracket, but uh, Pella losing to Fitzgerald 42 11, and it doesn't get any brighter for Pella coming in the future. Pella hosts next week. They host Cook next week, and the way Cook took apart Thomasville, Thomasville's a good team. Right now, I think better than Pelham. It's not going to be a nice weekend. Nice weekend again for Pelham. It might not be. You know, I wish Pelham the best. I wish nothing bad against anyone. Maybe I'm a little biased because you beat my bacon and chowder at the first <laughs> thing, <laughs> thing. But hey, keep trying, give it your all, and see how the season works out for you. Like I told you earlier, Brookwood plays Westwood this Friday night. Coming up here in Westwood in Camilla, Cool Channels will have that game as part of our weekly football games uh, through the week. Uh, next week coming up, uh, Westwood beating Tift Area 57 nothing. We kind of expected oh, that, yeah. didn't we, we? We all chose Westwood on that one, didn't we? Except Myron and Roger, I think they uh, chose Tift Area. See, you're getting all over because they're not. <laughs> I love it. Uh, they sent they, they, they sent, they faxed theirs in to Coley, didn't they? Right. On their picks for Friday Night Huddle? <laughs> you know, they've already faxed it in. So, But uh, good night for uh, Mitch Good, Jamie Davis, and Jason Warsham, all of them scoring touchdowns. Uh, for Westwood, Dylan Smith, JT Edor, and Collier Baggett also as well, getting some scores in for Westwood. It was a runaway up there in Tipton last Friday night for Westwood, but they got a good game against Brookwood coming up. It's going to be, I'm going to be eager to see. I, I, I think Westwood's got the upper hand right now, but it's going to be how to see how Brookwood plays out. Hopefully they make some adjustments and because they just need to do something extra on that offense. It's just driving me nuts. This is true. Driving me nuts. It's not that mine's the wide receiver that wants to be thrown to, but he does a great job of blocking and everything like that. It's just, I think that doesn't you have to throw it to him. Throw it to somebody because I think they didn't open it up to where they can open up the run a little bit more. They, they need to open it up because if you look at any of Brookwood games, the defense have played tough mm -hmm. until that point where they've been grinding down so much they've tired and they don't have anything else to give. They're giving all they can, but yep. it's not enough to step up with it. So you know, the offense got to keep them off the field and give them a chance. Absolutely. That's a good point because you're not going to be able to hold them down in the second half as much as you'd like because you're going both ways and being tired. So you got to keep up with the scoring. Hopefully they'll do that here against Westwood because Westwood's going to put a lot on the board for, for against Brookwood. They want a little piece of Brookwood. Yeah. <laughs> Always a big rivalry between Westwood and Brookwood, the two GISA schools, also with Southwest Georgia as well. They had the week off this week, so we'll get to them next week on the Friday Night Huddle as we go up to, we'll be, where are we going to be at the Friday Night Huddle? we got to talk about that. I'll cut all that out. So, But uh, we're going to take a quick break. Here's some other scores in the region that you may be interested in that deal with our regions here in Southwest Georgia. Take a look at them as we go to break here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. So we invited kids from all over South Georgia and North Florida to come here to Thomasville Toyota, brought the TV cameras and let them roll. They had a ball. Check this out. Thomasville Toyota, where you drive home happy. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. Where you drive home happy. Georgia Farm Bureau membership is a real value. We'll put you on the road to savings with our car rental discount programs. Save 5% on Enterprise, 15% on National and Alamo, and 20% on Hertz. Get backing and save. GFB members save 20% at Choice Hotels, which includes Comfort Inn, Comfort Suites, Quality, Sleep Inn, Clarion, Roadway Inn, and many more. As a member, you're eligible to save $500 on your next new qualified Ford purchase. Call your county Farm Bureau and start saving now. 
Southwest Georgia Oil Company, located in Bainbridge, Georgia, operates under the trade name Inland. The goal of Inland is to be the largest independent oil company in the tri-state area of Georgia, Florida, and Alabama. Moving quickly toward that goal, Inland serves the local area in numerous ways through its distributors, Sammy's on the Faithful Highway, the Inland Store on West Chotwell Street, and in Donaldsonville on Highway 84, the Self-Service Island on Calhoun Street. All you need is an Inland Fuel Card and the Inland Piggly Wiggly in Cairo. At Inland, we are proud to serve our local communities in Southwest Georgia. Since 1953, Sharper Oil Company has been providing fuel to Southwest Georgia and North Florida. Sharper Oil is your complete full-service dealer for fuel, oil by the gallon or in bulk, grease, tanks, from 150 to 30,000 gallons, filters and related parts needs. Sharper Oil Company, 250 Wiggum Dairy Road in Bainbridge. Call today, 246-2183. Sharper Oil Fueling Stations are open 24-7, providing you with your fuel and lubricant needs with your Sharper Fleet Card. Sharper Oil Company, fueling your way to success. Crooked Oak Country Club, located in Victorian-style village of Calquit, Georgia. Crooked Oak offers the challenge of an Arthur Davis-designed golf course with serenity, unobtrusive service, and scenic beauty of a luxury golf resort. From our charming clubhouse to our well-groomed greens, you'll find all the hallmarks of a larger, more publicized golf course and none of the inconveniences. 18 holes of pristine golf at Crooked Oak Country Club, in Colquitt, Georgia. At Anytime Fitness of Bainbridge, you're worth it. Anytime Fitness is the world's largest 24-hour co-ed fitness company. You can exercise any time of the day or night using your own security access key card. That's 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. One membership, thousands of clubs. At Anytime Fitness of Bainbridge, we're proud to offer the benefit of anywhere club access. With this benefit, you can visit thousands of clubs worldwide for the price of a standard monthly membership. In the Inland Port Shopping Center, 1408 Tallahassee Highway. Anytime Fitness. Welcome back, everybody, here to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. We're here on the Thomasville Toyota uh, dealership floor, and we're watching, looking around at all the people buying cars today. It's a busy day today. Yeah, quite a few of them are going to drive home happy. Drive home happy is right. Have you drive? You see one that you want to drive home happy in? Yeah, I saw that Tundra right there. I'm not going to go test drive. The one out on the on the thing leaning up, the black one? Yeah, is that the exactly. one you want? Okay, yes. you're going to have to fight me for that one because oh, okay. I like that one too. I'll, I'll take the other one, though. <laughs> I'll take the other one, but some beautiful cars here at Thomasville Toyota. Everybody's out. I mean, I don't think there's a sales rep that we can do an interview with that's around. They're all busy with customers today, so that's a great sign. It's because of us. They come to see us, isn't it? I think it? so. I think so. I think the two good-looking section ones are here today. I don't know what other ones Oh, I like that. I like that. The other two, that's why nobody came. If they would have saw them, they would have said, nah, not much going on. Exactly. <laughs> And they're related, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> Jesse, let's talk about this young man from Mitchell County. I know it came out on the other side of him this year, but number 21, Joaquin Williams from Mitchell County. Ooh, you talking about, hey, after the game, I said, if you take, they already got the red and blue. If you take that 21 off and stick a chest on, uh, S on it, you got the Mitchell County Superman. He that, was he Superman. He was amazing that game, man. Mitchell County all over Miller County in the first half of this ball game, but Mid Miller County comes back and prevails one point, beating Mitchell County in the opening region matchup between these two schools in Region One Single A. Then Miller County getting the best twenty-one to nothing. That was a good game, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You guys were live there. The cool channels will have that. Uh, had that. I guess it's tonight, isn't it, Coley? That's tonight. As you saw last night on the cool channels, had that game after the Friday night huddle that y'all saw. I mean, that went back and forth, didn't it? Yes, it did. Well, let me get your – and I'm going gonna, and I'm, I'm gonna to break precedence here a little bit and talk to you about something. Now, there were a lot of penalties called in that game, wasn't there? It was quite a few. Uh, Miller County kept shooting themselves in the foot. It was like they take two steps forward, one step back. They get something rolling, penalty, take it back. Get offense moving again, penalty, take it back. And then later in the second half, Mitchell County, like, they reversed. Miller County got their stuff together, and then Mitchell County would take two steps forward, one step back. It was quite a few penalties called. Uh, the, uh, it, during the game, Miller County got all the calls on them in the first half. Mitchell County got all the calls on them in the second, second half. half. It was almost like the referees were saying, well, we did it to Miller County in the first half. We're going to give Mitchell, we're going to do it to Mitchell County in the second half. And unfortunately, it showed because at halftime, Mitchell County was winning at halftime. I, I hate to put it out there, but I think that Miller and Mitchell County on that game – had uh, NFL replacement refs. Because <laughs> some of the calls they made and missed, like one of the teams breaking the huddle with 12 men in the uh, huddle, not called. It was a whole lot of things that was, uh, I was like, wow. Well, they call it an inadvertent <laughs> whistle on one of the fumbles as well, down it. by the goal line. And I Miller was. Miller should have picked that one up. Yeah. 
Because he had picked it up in the rain. There was no way that should have been called down right. because he fumbled it. He did fumble it. But they was, called him. Like, yeah. whistles called him down, so there was no instant replay. We should have yeah. called an instant replay. We had, we had, had cameras, cameras all over the field that night. <laughs> so, uh, but... Uh, it was it was a good game no matter what referees or whatever but it was a very very good game Joaquin Williams from Mitchell County just going all over the place he scored two touchdowns to go along with 90 yards of rushing and 67 yards in receiving then they call on him to kick the extra point they kick the game winning field goal set the stage Jesse what happened at the end of the game uh, it was already I, I knew what uh, my thing was it was 40 about 45 seconds left and I was like, hey, is the game over? I said, but if you got a number 21 on your team, Williams, someone like that, 45 seconds is plenty of time. And I said they had to get him into the game, which they did. They passed it down to the sideline. He got out of bounds and gave him a chance to keep the field goal. I think he only missed it right by so much. But he had enough distance, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. First field goal attempt of this whole season for Mitchell County. They don't kick any extra points. They go for two the whole time. So this was a new experience for Mitchell County. Coach Cornelius, the first-year head coach over there, said, hey, you know, let's, we, we ain't got nothing else we can do. Let's throw it up in there and see if he can kick it. And sure enough, boy, he was there. He had plenty, mm -hmm. plenty of distance, as you saw, but just wide right. I like, hey, <laughs> the young man, he cooks, he cleans, <laughs> scores touchdown and kick field goals. There, there wasn't much that he didn't do that night. Man, but, I mean, uh, Mitchell was all over. You, call, you guys called it during the Friday night huddle. You guys called this game where Mitchell County – had that little attitude to them. They came out 20 to six lead at halftime. They came out believing in themselves. I wouldn't put blame on any anybody, but the coach kind of stepped away from what was working. Mm -hmm. Williams was hurt though. Did For, he get hurt in the second half? Oh no, he didn't get hurt. He was hurting. Uh, oh, he Miller, was hurting, he was hurting Miller, County. Miller County. Right. And uh, third quarter. They didn't use him much at all. Mm -hmm. It was like they were going to other running backs and they were being stopped. They were being stopped for yard loss. But every time he's touched the ball, four or five yards of touch. But you stepped away from that and I didn't understand it. You don't think it was being tired or something, giving him a rest or something like that? What did you guys think? You were there on the sideline. What did you think? Yeah, he was still hyper for, on the sideline. Was he? He was still bouncing around. He was ready to go. And even I think even if he's dead tired, he's going to give you two to three yards every time he touches the ball. You know, you can sleep on Saturday and Sunday ready for school on Monday, right? Exactly. That's what's good about high school football. Run them till they fall almost. But uh, that drops Mitchell County to 0-1 in the Region 1A, 1-4 overall. That would have given them a big boost in the butt, I think, if they would have beat Miller. Miller. The pirate ship is sailing, baby. It's still pillaging. It came into Camilla and Pillage the other night, and they're sailing strong. They're going. They went their season going their overall season of four and one and one and zero oh in Region One Five A. To me, they are the favorites right now in Region One. Oh, they got a, they got a couple of good players on there. Number ten and number twenty one. Those are some amazing players on uh, Miller County also. Number ten was Marvin Grant, rushed for one hundred thirty yards. He had uh, scored their only first half points on an eighty six yard touchdown run. I mean, they missed the extra point, but, I mean, that's, that, that had to be pretty fun to watch. That came off the right tackle. He was like grease lightning coming through there, man. I was like, wow. He, he was moving. He had a hole big enough for me to run through? Yeah. Oh, he, he made a juke here and there, and then he just hit the corner, and that was it. 86 yards. No one from Mitchell County could catch him. They tried, but they <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Mitchell goes to Randolph Clay, another favorite in Region 1A next week, along with Miller County host Calhoun County. I think Miller is going to keep rolling pretty strong there with Calhoun. So, But Miller County gets the best of Mitchell County in our Cool Channels Game of the Week last week. Jesse, it was, that was fun. The atmosphere was fun. Everything was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was real nice. And Miller County <laughs> had some nice fans to come. It oh, was, amazing. was it good? It's a, what, what happened? Tell me what happened. What happened? Wow, man, it was on the refs like crazy. Oh well, during the first half, I can imagine with all the penalties going towards against Mitchell, Miller County. They were cursing the refs out. I was, I was amazed that the refs didn't throw a flag on them, man. It was wow. <laughs> well, there was a lot of unsportsmanlike called on the kids. It was. They had a few of them out there, but it's all in the game to get them excited and not necessarily doing it. On purpose? No, it, they don't it, do it, it on comes, purpose. Exactly. It comes out. I mean, when you get into a tight ball game like that and things don't go your way, is a lot of times you're going to hear some things slip and fall. But you know, that's that's part of the game. Yeah, I, th I think one of the uh, defensive players from Miller may have cursed the uh, ref out that was standing in front of him because he was making some bad calls, and that's when they got that penalty and took him back. Oh, he got a little frustrated, didn't he? Yes, he did. Well, don't we all? <laughs> well, those kind of calls, though. Well, I mean, that's that's what I was asking you. I mean, there was a there was a lot of it was a lot of write-up in the paper about the referees. That's why I wanted to bring it up. You guys were there. You saw it. I wasn't playing, and I got to, you know, 
upset about some of the calls. Well, you also got pushed back one time. They asked you to move back. You almost got flagged on you and yeah, Bob did. one time, didn't they? Right. They did, uh, Miller kind of said, uh, no, Mr. kind of said, please step back. I'll deal with penalize us if you all are Because they're a home up. team. Right, home team. Like, okay. We'll you guys back. got, I told you, you guys, you keep getting out there. You want to play. I can see it. I can see it. We'll but to, for Bob, lazy Bob on our camera crew to get penalized, now that's, that is headlines. Because he doesn't move. I think Bob wanted to play that game. Oh, he really wanted to get yeah, into it? Bob wanted to get into it. Yeah, I saw him at the Friday night huddle. That wasn't very, you know, we, we'll forget about that too. But uh, uh, great, it, it was a good game all in all. Yes, it was. It was, it was a good game all in all. We congratulate the Miller County Pirates for going one up in the Region 1A over Mitchell County this week. Let's take a look at the region breakdowns as we start out every week that we're going to do here on Toy uh, the Thomasville Toyota Scoreboard Show is that we'll each time each week now since we're in region play we'll go ahead and give you the region breakdowns of where the standings are each week so we'll take a look at that on our way to break here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Thomasville Toyota the happy place. Thomasville Toyota. Thomasville Toyota. Thomasville Toyota. Thomasville Toyota. Thomasville Toyota. Where you are most happy. It's a great place for sports training and keeping it safe. Come to Fitness Life for your workout. It's convenient and it's open 24-hour today. Follow your dreams, find your passion here at Fitness Life. Sunbelt Trophy on East Jackson Street is your one-stop shop for all your celebration needs. Now, just for high schools, check out our sister company, DiscountVarsityAwards.com where you'll find amazing discounts on beautiful full-color awards custom designed for your school. Check us out at DiscountVarsityAwards.com or call 229-228-1187. Only at Sunbelt Trophy in Thomasville. At Farm Credit, our roots run deep in this rich Georgia soil. We are the nation's leading provider of credit to farmers and farm businesses. And we know what it takes to grow your business. We've closed more loans on the hood of a pickup truck than some bankers will in a lifetime. We're proud of our history. Prouder still to finance the dreams of farmers, landowners, and agribusinesses. We're Farm Credit. We're here to help you grow. Shopping from home, from your office, from your phone at thomasvilletoyota.com. Shop for brand new Toyotas or look at hundreds of pre-owned vehicles. Get approved in seconds with one click. And during business hours, live chat with one of our internet specialists. So shop easy at the happy place, thomasvilletoyota.com. Thomasville Toyota, where you have home happy. Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota here at Thomasville Toyota's dealership. And I'm joined by Michelle Wilkinson. Wilkerson. Wilkerson. Michelle Wilkerson. She's the internet salesperson here at Thomasville Toyota. So when you're on the internet, ding -a ding, -ding trying right. to find one of the cars, tell us a little bit about that. Um, basically, somebody gets our number off the internet and they call in, and I'm the one that answers, and I help them find a vehicle at the price that they wanted at. So you get them all hooked up. Right, all hooked up. So did you do, let me ask you a question. Did you play any high school sports? I played softball. <gasps> you did? Where'd you play softball at? Jacksonville, Florida. What school? Wolfson High School. He knows a little bit about Jacksonville. <laughs> yeah. Coach at Stanton High School. Okay, cool. Yeah. Softball, so any awards, any accolades, anything? Uh, did you play college ball uh, after that? No, I just went one year and then I moved to Tifton. And so you moved to Tifton. What yes, brought sir. you to Tifton from Jacksonville? Family. Is that where your family's yes, from? Sir. 
Well, that's great. That's great. Well, tell us a little bit about Thomasville Toyota as far as, you know, the people working here and stuff. You said you were new. You're new here I now. I'm new. It's a great group of people from what I can see. We all work together pretty good. And Where did you come from before, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I came from Tifton. I just moved here from Tifton. Oh, really? What brought you to Thomasville? Uh, the job. The job. Well, congratulations. Ambiance. The ambiance. Yeah, the ambiance. People. That's it. The people. <laughs> High school football. Uh, <laughs> yes, high school football. <laughs> Michelle's going to say yes, high school football. But uh, do you see any difference between Florida and Georgia as far as the atmospheres, as far as the people um, working in different towns? I don't know. I mean, there's a great mix here. I love Florida. I grew up in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm more of a city girl than a, I don't know, small city girl. Small town girl. Yeah. yeah. You well, can say country. country. You can say country. We won't be offended. Yeah. Yeah, he's from here. Yeah. You won't offend him. He's, okay. you know, he's just, you know, Jesse's Jesse. He's from, where are you from, Metcalf? No, oh, Boston, Boston, Georgia. No, uh, <laughs> I love getting started on that deal. Boston, Georgia. <laughs> Jesse's from Boston. Who's from Metcalf? Myron and Chris. There you go. And who's your mom? Nita Lovett. Nita Lovett. She wants to mention his mom all the time. So, But, Michelle, thank you very much for stopping in with thank us you. today. Anything you want to say to the people out there uh, in Thomasville, on. Toyota land? <laughs> Come see us. Come see us. So when you're on the internet, this is who you're going to talk to, Michelle Wilkerson. We Wilkerson. Need, Gosh. We need to have, <laughs> Michelle Wilkerson. We need you to so. put on something, though. We put out a poll for the uh, Cool Channel Sexiest Man, oh. and uh, it came back as Coley number one, myself <laughs> number two, and uh, Bobby number three. What do you think about those rankings? See, that's, that's Coley standing back there. I plead the fifth. Uh, <laughs> Good, good, good answer. Good answer. Well, Michelle, thank you very much for joining us, having some fun with us today here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show. Make sure to tune in next week again as we go into week seven here in Southwest Georgia High School football here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Look at these Camrys in stock here at Thomasville Toyota. That's not even half of them. We are loaded with huge inventory and big savings all month long. Check it out. $9 down, $9 a month for nine months on every brand new Thomasville Toyota in stock. All of them, cars, trucks, SUVs, minivans, $9 down, $9 a month for nine months. Come on out right now to Thomasville Toyota, where you drive home happy. The stock they sold you is basically worthless. Either the companies don't exist or they've never heard of Lowe and Michaels Investments. Didn't I tell you about that one, George? Didn't I tell you to load up on that one, George? Didn't I tell you I have my own mother in that stock, George? Did you speak to anyone else besides Matthew Raines? Yes, I spoke to his supervisor on at least two occasions. Cha-ching. I believe his first name was Park. Can you run a check with Marshalls and see if Park Richardson is still locked up? It happened in Canada, so it's none of your business. Except your victims are in the U.S., and you use the U.S. mail to get to them. That makes it my business. Inspected, certified, and warranted, Price Point Car Sales is the value center where people have been saving money for over a decade. Save over $10,000 off of a sticker. The smart money today is on value, and at Price Point Car Sales, we've got you covered with rates as low as 0%. With multiple locations, we get huge volume discounts, and with our in-house finance solutions, no one can do what Price Point Car Sales can do. If you want to get the best price, get straight to the point. Price Point Car Sales. 
Southwest Georgia Oil Company, located in Bainbridge, Georgia, operates under the trade name Inland. The goal of Inland is to be the largest independent oil company in the tri-state area of Georgia, Florida, and Alabama. Moving quickly toward that goal, Inland serves the local area in numerous ways through its distributors, Sammy's on the Faithful Highway, the Inland Store on West Shotwell Street, and in Donaldsonville on Highway 84, the Self-Service Island on Calhoun Street. All you need is an Inland Fuel Card and the Inland Piggly Wiggly in Cairo. At Inland, we are proud to serve our local communities in Southwest Georgia. Come see the easy guys, come to your 